Did you hear that? Oh, it's a chicken. Oh God, it's a geese. A million geese. By a million, I mean about 10. Oh, look at the chicks. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh. Super cute. Are you the mama? Are you the mama? Nobody knows if you're the mama. Who are you people? Quack, quack. Okay, see you guys later. I think the fireworks were for me. Maybe not. <laughs> to see Ping and we are uh, we're going through a village and there's a little market here which is basically you know you can walk up and buy stuff or you can drive through which is what we're doing getting some I think dry tofu at the drive through now that's a fire deep fried tofu We just added noodles, so it's really bubbly now. Jim was just telling me this is a very traditional, authentic, authentic, seeping style dish that they're making. And she's never seen, I didn't catch on video, but he throws noodles into the broth that he's making, but he breaks them. And they're different sizes. The first batch of noodles, he broke that quite small. And the second batch, he broke them about maybe two inches long and a different style of noodle. So two styles of noodle, I think, based on the texture of them. And lots of meat in the broth. And yeah, this is going to be really delicious. Plus, I think that deep fried tofu is going to end up in the soup too. I'm not sure yet though. I don't know. I don't know either. We'll see. So the food is hitting the table. We've got a pig, pig's feet on the left. There's the deep fried tofu. It didn't go in the soup. It's a dish on its own. Tong Tsim Tai is the green bag. And this is the Be prepared. Super delicious. Everything is wonderful. I'm going to eat. Goodbye. We are done getting dishes, but we got a new arrival. Ribs. Haven't tried it yet. Look it. it looks so delicious. This is a view of Siping and we see the little tea garden down there just across the street from the sifting house. But as we drove in we noticed the environment here is absolutely incredible. In the uh, more remote mountains there's tons of biodiversity. So basically the hill is not top to bottom tea. It's really uh, not only is it prime terroir, but they take good care of it. They know how to plant that. So we've arrived in Siping, where the family actually comes from. Uh, and we're going to drop off a bunch of tea to get sifted. And you can see they're in full sifting mode here. You know, get good teas and use uh, hand sifting. They don't use machine. That's right. It's very hard for the machines to get out those stems. They don't hurt in the tea. Exactly. So I'm just inside. We're about to have tea with a, a local producer here in uh, Siping. And we, I, we're in his house here. It's very traditional. It's got sort of a courtyard. 
with a wide open ceiling. There's, uh, I think, four bedrooms at the back, two here, and then this sort of open area here that's sheltered, and then two more bedrooms, and then the ceiling's wide open in the center over this, uh, this water pool, shallow pool area here. He's got some tea going on over here. There's his Yaozing machine. And then we're gonna head over and have tea with him. Just come with me, we'll go over there right now. So we go by these two rooms, you see in the room here, it's a little bit private, I shouldn't do that, but just so you can see the traditional bed, it's quite interesting, a little bit different than ours. It's important that it's covered on three sides. So we'll go through this door, and this is his production facility area, garage door, um, drying machines here. Uh, that's his ball roller. That's an, uh, one style of them. More drying machines. Oh, and I'm late. I gotta go quick. It's a little bit quiet here. Can I talk to myself? So these are my first sip of a uh, seeping Taiwanian. Still processing. I mean, I'm still figuring out what I think about it, so I'll tell you in a minute. So we had the tea at the uh, at the local villager's house, the Siping Guanyin, and I just wanted to point out that it was indeed a, a little bit mediocre, but it turns out the reason is is they sold all their best tea already, uh, and that was last autumn's tea that he just kept for himself. So here's the interesting thing. It wasn't bad, it was just mediocre. And I'm sure a lot of you, and myself included, have paid a lot of money in tea shops for that exact quality of tea. And that's the difference between us and other tea providers, is we're bringing you real, authentic, high-quality Chinese tea, not whatever happens to taste okay and is Chinese tea. Uh, it's hard to explain unless you can taste the difference, but I just wanted to mention that. So another aspect of village life is the fact that you've got farm animals all around. So there's the pig pens there. And uh, it's hard to overstate how humid it is in Fujian. It's even drizzling right now. And you can see that you've got uh, moss growing on the uh, roof here. We're just walking around the village of Siping, having tea and here's a traditional old, an old traditional house, beautiful. Again, you see the moss on the ceiling the uh, bundles of sticks in front of the house. I'm not sure if it's firewood or for something else, for building something, like making crafts or baskets or something like that. Not sure. in the middle. Bamboo Grove. So we made a pit stop at the, uh, the producer is originally from uh, Siping. And so this is their original homestead. Uh, they have four 
he has three brothers, four boys total, and these are their four houses. And this one is his. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the other one here. And here's the view. Although it's somewhat foggy. Mist. So according to one of the legends, the Taiguanyin, the mother plant is down here somewhere. We couldn't go down because of the heavy rain in the last couple of days and it's still quite misty and wet. But you can see the environment here is gorgeous. Mountains, mist, there are tea gardens, but the whole mountain is not tea. There's a lot of, a lot of natural growth all interspersed here, just beautiful. You can hear the birds singing. Coming. We didn't see you there. So we're at another location of the uh, Guanyin origin story and there's a dog. So I've fallen behind a little bit so I'm gonna get my butt moving up these stairs. So according to one of the legends, these are the mother bushes. Taiguanyin. It all started here. According to one of the legends. According to the other legend, it all started over there. So this is the view from the uh, our second Guanyin origin story stop. It's just a beautiful view of the misty mountains in the distance and I think the city off in the distance might be on sea but I'm not sure. It wasn't too far and behind us is a mountain. Oh and there's a statue up here that I didn't notice just coming into the frame now higher up. That might be the Guanyin. I don't know. Is that Guanyin? Up there? Oh yes yes. So uh, I think she's there in the frame, hiding up on the mountain, telling the guy, hey, make some tea and make it good. And there's the guy I guess she talked to. What is this guy's name? Is he also Wei? Typical misty morning in the tea mountains.